So hi, hello and welcome, my crop hunter here again and look what I found uh, today in my pond water sample in a jar standing on my windowsill. It's uh, called Iolosoma. The name of this little worm is called Iolosoma. Well, it's uh, quite a common freshwater worm, but there are also a few marine species, so saltwater species, but most of them can be found uh, in freshwater. Now, in nature you can find a variety of different types of worms, but Iolosoma belongs to the so-called analyst. Annelids. And annelids, these are the so-called the segmented worms. And if you very look very carefully, then you're able to see that the worm is not smooth on the outside, but divided into segments. And it also has bristles. Bristles, these are the little hair that are standing out on the side of the body of the worm. Now the worm uses those uh, bristles to move forward because uh, they can be used to anchor the worm um, into the ground to increase the friction so that it's able to push itself forward. And uh, yeah, on my smooth microscope slide, the worm did indeed have some slight problems uh, pushing itself forward. Iolosoma is a fairly large microscopic worm. It can be up to a millimeter in length. Uh, and uh, I have some of them even uh, two millimeters long. Um, it's large size and also the fact that it's transparent makes it quite easily to be observed under the microscope. And uh, you might uh, be also be able to find the stomach maybe of this worm. And if you look into the stomach, like I've uh, done here, then you might be able to also see what it has eaten. And in this case, uh, this worm has devoured some diatoms. Diatoms, uh, these are some uh, algae uh, that it found uh, in the water. And yeah, it simply swallowed them up and now they accumulated and built up inside the stomach. Iolosoma does have a remarkable ability to regenerate. I once uh, cut one of these worms in half and both uh, parts continued to live on. Uh, and uh, this ability to regenerate also makes it very suitable for asexual reproduction. And this is apparently one of the main ways how this uh, worm uh, reproduces. Um, so what it does is, is when the worm has reached a certain size, it will grow um, a new head right in the middle um, of the worm. So the worm is actually going to then divide in half and then you have uh, two worms and uh, in this way um, yeah it's able to reproduce quite quickly and um, yeah that's basically what it likes to do. Now there is one uh, typical characteristic uh, of this worm and that is uh, these are those uh, orange red round structures that you can find. Um, in many cases those round uh, structures are on the head of the worm but in some species also scattered throughout the body. And uh, those round orange uh, structures are so called oil globules or oil droplets. And they are actually the ones that give the, uh, the worm its name. Aiolo refers to oil and soma body. So it's uh, yeah the oil bodied worm. And uh, in German, if you translate the German name of this worm into English, it means oil droplet worm. It's also quite a nice, uh, quite a nice name. Now uh, those uh, oil uh, droplets, wherever you can find them, also might be used to identify the worm. So there are some of the, some species have them more um, on the head others have them more scattered throughout the body so those oil globules they can be used also to characterize different types of these worms. Now if you want to find these worms yourself then I suggest that you search for them in the sediment of a pond so basically in the ground on the ground of a pond. Um, in my case I found uh, those uh, worms in decomposing plant material and the reason why they like to be there is, is because they like to scavenge the dead organic material of dead plants and they use this um, as a food. Now these worms are very flexible um, and some time ago I made a video where I squashed uh, one of these worms uh, with two ear bubbles. So there was an ear bubble approaching from the left, an ear bubble approaching from the right and in the middle was this worm and it's so flexible that it completely lost its shape. But if you want to know what happened to this worm afterwards, then I invite you to of course watch the video where I show you the full event here. Um, yeah, I put of course a link into the description below but I, I'll tell you the worm was not harmed because those worms are so extremely flexible. I just expand later on again and they just continue to live as if nothing happened. Well, 
well right now i'm just gonna say i think that's all for today i wish you all the best happy microbe hunting and worm hunting as always and uh, see you around next time bye bye